Welcome to Pentecostal Preaching Channel. Please subscribe to the channel if you enjoy what you see. Hit the bell to be notified when something new is uploaded. Have a great day. Book of Luke, chapter number 17. Amen. Luke, chapter number 17, verse number 5. Just on a kind of personal note, Brother Steve, it was sure neat seeing you playing the guitar tonight. God bless you. Amen. Amen, amen. Luke 17 in verse number 5. Amen. Just feels good in the house of God tonight. Amen, amen. Verse 5 says, And the apostles said unto the Lord, Increase our faith. Everybody say, Increase our faith. Let's say it together. Increase our faith. Amen. And the Lord said, if ye had faith as a grain of mustard seed, he might say unto this sycamine tree, and probably a sycamore tree, something, mulberry tree, but ye might say to this tree, Be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. Amen. I want to just preach on this subject tonight. Increase our faith. Amen. I, I, I want God tonight. Starting with me, starting here at the pulpit, and then moving through this place all across the church from side to side, every single individual in this house, my prayer is that God would increase our faith in every area of our life. Let's pray together and let's ask that God would do just that tonight. We love you, Jesus. God, we thank you for your Holy Ghost that is in this place. Thank you for the power of God that's moving. Thank you for your spirit that's here. We thank you for the opportunity to be gathered together. We love you. We worship you. One more time before we're seated, let's just thank God for being in this house. Let's lift our voice and thank him. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. 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 God bless you. Shake hands with somebody before you're seated. Tell them it is good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Brother Larry, if you can just a little bit turn me down in the monitors. <clears throat> Amen. Increase our faith. How many know that faith is an important part of living for God? I want to tell you, we got to have faith. <clears throat> and we need to know and recognize, and we also need to believe that we serve a mighty God, a God that can do anything. The uh, Job 26, I'm going to read some verses here, but beginning with verse number seven, the NLT version of Job 26 says this, that God stretches the northern sky over the empty space and he hangs the earth on nothing. Aren't you glad that we serve that kind of big God? It goes on to say, he wraps the rain in his thick clouds and the clouds do not burst with the weight. He shrouds his throne with his clouds and he created the horizon when he separated the waters. He set the boundaries for day and night. I'm going to tell you, we serve a big God that's in this place tonight. In Jeremiah 10, the Bible says, <clears throat> beginning with verse number 12, that God made the earth by his power and he preserves it by his wisdom. With his own understanding, he stretched out the heavens. And when he speaks in the thunder, the heavens roar with rain. I tell you, we serve a mighty, he's a great big God and he's in this place tonight. The prophet said he causes the clouds to rise over the earth. And he sends the lightning with the rain and releases the wind from his storehouses. Isaiah said it like this in chapter 40 verse number 12. He asked, who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and meted out heaven with a span and comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure and weighed the mountains and scales and the hills in a balance? We serve a big God tonight. The prophet asked, who hath directed the spirit of the Lord or being his counselor hath taught him? With whom took he counsel and who instructed him and taught him in the path of judgment and taught him knowledge and showed him the way of understanding. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are as counted as the small dust of the balance. Behold, he taketh up the isles as a very little 
thing. I tell you, we serve a big God and he's in this place tonight. Can you say amen? Isaiah 40 verse 17, he continues, all the nations before him are as nothing and they are counted to him less than nothing in vanity. To whom will you liken God and what likeness will you compare unto him? And I, I took the time to read these verses tonight just to remind you who we're dealing with tonight. We serve a big God that is worthy of people believing in his ability. Amen. There's a, a list of, uh, I have here of, of some of the miracles he's did in the Old Testament. How many still believe that God really did turn the water into blood in Egypt? How many know that he did send the plagues of flogs and lice and flies all the way through the slaying of the firstborn? The Bible lets us know that not only did he that, do that, but then God split the Red Sea. He parted the Red Sea. He opened the Red Sea so that God's people could walk through it. I tell you, God can do anything. And he's in this place tonight. Amen. The Bible records that he healed the bitter waters of Merah. And he gave Israel uh, manna from heaven for 40 years. He gave water from the rock again at Rephidim. And the Bible tells us that he gave us the miracle of Aaron's rod that budded. And the Bible says that uh, when the brazen serpent was lifted up by Moses in the wilderness. Everyone that looked at the serpent was healed of the plague. And we read in the Old Testament. I'm just telling you some of this just to remind you who we're dealing with tonight. That, that it really did happen in the book of Joshua. That Joshua had the, the temerity, the guts, the, 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 I don't know, the boldness for the first time in history for somebody to look at the sun and say, stand still. And the Bible says that the sun and the moon stood still. We read in the Old Testament about uh, the replenishing of the oil and the meal for the widow at Zarephath and the raising of that same widow's son. We read about the parting of the Red Sea, uh, excuse me, the parting of the Jordan River for the prophet Elijah and then again for the prophet Elisha. We read about the floating of the axe head. And I'm, I want to tell you, like my dad preached a while back, the axe head can still swim when God speaks the word. We serve a mighty God. Amen. We, we read in the Old Testament about Jonah being swallowed by a whale and Jonah being spit up on the dry land after being swallowed by a whale. We, we preach and believe here that three Hebrew children really did walk in the fiery furnace and they were fine. And we believe that it's more than a fairy tale that Daniel was delivered from the mouths of the lion. And I took the time to tell you that just to remind you that we serve a mighty big God tonight. And can I tell you that a big God like that deserves some people that believe in him, that have faith in him. Anybody want to shout with me? I believe he's mighty. Anybody believe he's able tonight? Amen. I asked you a minute ago, but can anybody wave your hand and say, I have been healed by that big God. I tell you, we've got a reason to worship and praise him. And I got a reason to stand up here tonight and preach in the face of every devil of doubt and tell you that God is a mighty God. And that I believe in him. I believe he can do anything. I believe he's in this place to break chains, to set people free. To fill people with the Holy Ghost again, Sister Debbie, to see sins washed away. And if you need healing, you can be healed tonight in Jesus' name. Somebody ought to clap your hands and thank God that we serve a mighty God. Oh, hallelujah. Let's lift our voice, clap our hands, and thank God. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. I, I tell you, I want to have faith in God. And, and, and it's important that we, we have a lot of faith in God. Can I, I want to, I want to tell you tonight that faith is, is measurable. Did you know that you can, you can measure how much faith you have, or at least God can faith is quantifiable. In fact, we read several times in the word of God where God would, 
look at someone. Jesus would look at someone and say, you know, I have measured your faith and you have just a little bit of faith. We read in Matthew 6, can you imagine when Jesus is speaking in the Sermon on the Mountain, he says, oh, ye of little faith. I tell you, talking about wilting in front of Jesus, him measuring your faith and saying, you just got a little bit of faith. But he did it again in Matthew 8 when they were in the the storm uh, on the sea and Jesus is sleeping in the bottom of the boat. The Bible says that Jesus, after the disciples woke him up, they were terrified. Jesus looked at them and said, oh, ye of little faith, what is your problem? Why are you afraid? Why are you fearful? Mark gives his account of that story. He, he, Jesus didn't say he just had a little bit of faith. He said uh, in Mark 4 and 40, he said, why are you fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? Jesus said, you don't have any faith. I tell you, I don't want to be judged as having no faith. Matthew 14 and 31, Peter had uh, the faith to get out on the, 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 the sea and begin to walk. Uh, but he got his eyes off of Jesus. And, and uh, I got a feeling that something had happened in his faith uh, fuel gauge. Something had happened between him stepping out of the boat and him looking around at the waves because he began to sink down. And Jesus then began to measure his faith after catching him by the hand. He said to Peter, oh, thou of little faith, why did you doubt? We read in Matthew 16, where in another a, a, a scenario in scripture. Jesus looked at the disciples and he said, again, when he was talking to them about the leaven of the Pharisees, why uh, do you have little faith? Why are you reasoning among yourselves because you have no bread? I'll tell you tonight, I don't want Jesus to look at me and say, I just have a little bit of faith. We read also in places, thank you, brother Justin. We read in other places in scripture, This is beautiful, where Jesus would look at someone and say, you have great faith. Now, I tell you, I would love for Jesus to look at me and say, you have great faith. Matthew 15, the Syrophoenician woman, this Gentile lady, she had a problem. Her daughter was possessed of a devil. And she came to Jesus and and began to press her way through obstacles, through the disciples' resistance through apparently even Jesus' resistance to healing her daughter. And and she just kept pressing until Jesus had to stop and say, Woman, when I look at you, I got to give you this commendation. You have got a lot of faith. We read in Matthew uh, chapter 8, there was a centurion that that looked at Jesus and said, Jesus, I've got a sick uh, servant at home. And uh, if you would just speak the word, uh, I'm a man of authority. I'm under authority and I have people under me. And I understand how authority works. You don't even have to come to my house. If you will just speak the word, my servant would be healed. And the Bible says that Jesus looked at that man and he marveled. Wouldn't you make, like to impress Jesus to the point where he's astonished? Jesus marveled at him. And he said, I'm going to tell you something. I have not found so great faith. No, not in all of Israel. Now, I'm going to tell you, Jesus can measure our faith. And Jesus does not like small faith. I tell you tonight, I'm interested in, in having a whole lot of faith. Amen. We, and some of you may remember this, we used to sing a song and I I, I like it. I don't think it's necessarily wrong, but it does have a, uh, you can interpret it. Uh, It it probably could be written a little bit better, but the song went like this. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. You don't need a whole lot. Just use what you got. Faith, faith, faith. Just a little bit of faith. And, and I understand the principle. And we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. And, but I tell you, I, I'd rather have a lot of faith, quite frankly. Yeah. Amen. I'd rather sing the song, faith, faith, faith. A whole lot of faith. Faith, faith, faith. A whole lot of faith. I want a whole lot. And I'm going to use what I've got. Faith, faith, faith. Give me a whole lot of faith. Amen. Amen. I tell you the faith that I want. I want it to be faith that sees mountains move. 
I want faith that like in our text, you can speak to a tree and it'll be uprooted and cast into the sea. I, I want the kind of faith that, 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 that I can see the miraculous. But I also want the kind of faith that'll help me make it through my Christian walk with God. I want the kind of faith that works on Monday as well. You know what I'm talking about? The kind of faith you work up on a, on a Monday morning. You got to face the day and the week and, and the, the goosebumps of Sunday night are gone. Uh, but I want to be the kind of person that my faith meter on a Monday morning is still such that I'll say, you know what? God is still in control. He can still do anything. Amen. Faith mixed with life. Faith mixed with the reality of getting up and go to work. I tell you, that's the kind of faith that I want in every area, in every aspect of my life. I'll tell you, faith is picky about who it, who it hangs out with. Faith is picky about what it associates with. Matthew chapter 8 verse 26. Jesus said, why are you so fearful? Oh, ye of little faith. Apparently having a little bit of faith and fear seem to go together. Oh yeah, it does. And I, I believe that having a lot of faith does not associate with fear. You get enough faith in God, your fear is going to go out the other door. You get enough faith in God coming in, doubt and unbelief is going to head out the back door. I want enough faith that I can live for God in victory. That'll rebuke the, just the, the, the thoughts that want to uh, pick at your brain throughout the day and, and throughout your work week and keep some of you awake at, uh, from, from sleeping well at night. Uh, I tell you, faith can be so powerful and so enduring uh, that fear has to flee out of your life. Amen. I, I read in, in, in our Bible some of the associations that, that the, the scripture gives us with faith. Matthew 23 and 23 speaks of judgment, mercy, and faith. Mercy hangs out with judgment and mercy. 1 Corinthians 13 and 13, we read about faith, hope, and charity. That's the kind of things that faith hope hangs out with. Uh, Ephesians 6 and 23, Paul said, peace be to the brethren and love with faith. I'm going to tell you, faith likes to hook up with love and faith likes to team up with peace. First Thessalonians three and six says it speaks of faith and charity. We know in Galatians five, the fruit of the spirit where they're all teamed up together. It's faith teamed up with love and faith teamed up with joy Faith in the same passage as peace. Faith hooked up with long suffering. Faith linked up and teamed up with gentleness. Faith yoked up with goodness. And faith where it's on the same uh, committee as meekness and temperance. Uh, I'm just telling you, you need to get faith, that kind of faith that, that mixes into your life. Uh, faith that'll help you Monday. Faith that'll help you Tuesday. Faith that'll be with you every day of your life. Acts 3 and 16, Peter is preaching and he talks about uh, the name of Jesus. And he says, and the name of Jesus through faith in his name. But I'm going to tell you, faith and, and the name of Jesus go together. Did you hear that? Faith and the name of Jesus go together. We just heard a song a minute ago. When you call on that name, when you call on the name of Jesus, uh, demons are going to have to run out the door. When you call on the name of Jesus, uh, fear is going to have to flee. Uh, when you call on the name of Jesus, uh, faith begins to rise. Uh, when you call on the name of Jesus, uh, your faith may go from a little bit to to more and more till somebody could look at you and say that's a man of faith right there I tell you if you're if you're struggling with your faith index tonight it might be the thing for somebody to cry out right now from where you are on the name of Jesus come on don't be too proud to lift your voice and say the name of Jesus don't be too proud to lift your voice and call on the name of Jesus I believe when we call on that name that faith to be healed that faith Faith for victory and faith for, for overcoming power can come into this house. Come on together. Let's lift our voice. Let's call on the name of Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Somebody's faith needs to increase tonight. I'm going to preach. I'm going to preach it till your faith gets higher. 
Amen, amen. This preacher is not going to stop with just a little bit of faith tonight. This preacher is not going to stop with just a little bit of faith in this house tonight. I'm not going to quit preaching faith until I feel it begin to surge in this place tonight a little bit ain't enough a little bit ain't gonna make it but I believe tonight in the power of the name of Jesus that faith can increase somebody ought to stand to your feet and lift your voice and call on the name of Jesus (laughs) hallelujah amen amen I read in Acts 6 and 5, you can be seated, that Stephen was a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost. Acts 11 says that Barnabas was described as a good man full of the Holy Ghost and faith. Another thing faith likes to to hook up with is the Holy Ghost. Imagine that. Amen. If you've got a faith deficiency tonight, the, the best antibiotic, the best vitamin you can take is to get full of the Holy Ghost. You, you, you need to pray until you talk in tongues. You need to pray until you believe again. You need to pray until you're stirred up. You need to pray until you're focused again. You need to pray in the Holy Ghost until your problems start fading out. And you begin to see the God that stretched out the north over the empty place. You need to pray in the Holy Ghost until you see the one that that measures the water in the span of his hand. I tell you, he's a mighty God. And there's something about getting full of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you why this is so important. Is the Bible says in Matthew 9, there was these, these two blind men in Matthew 9, 27 that followed Jesus. They followed him. And, and so there was a certain measure of faith there. They were, they were following him and saying, thou son of David, have mercy on us. The Bible says that when he was coming to the house, these blind men came up and Jesus said unto them, he asked them a question. He said, do you believe that I'm able to do this? Do you believe that I'm able to heal you? Do you believe that I'm able to help you? Do you believe that I'm able to help you live for God through your problems? Do you believe? You've been asking and praying and sending up prayer requests. And that's right and commendable. Don't ever stop. But do you believe that God can help you with your job? Do you believe that God can save your child? Or do you believe that God can save your unsaved husband? Do you believe? I I feel like tonight God's here to stir some of us. And it's, it's time for us to do a little, um, you know, just kind of check the faith gauge a little bit. Where's our faith at? Are we at a little bit? Are we at a medium level? Or do we have a whole lot? Do you believe that I'm able to do this? And Jesus looked at them and their answer was this. It was just a two word answer. They looked at Jesus, maybe looked at each other. And they said, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, we believe you can heal us. We believe that you can heal. I'm going to tell you, this is simple tonight, but I want to ask you, do you believe that God is able to do this? Do do you believe? There's an answer. There's an answer for you. Do, Do you believe that God can come in your home and speak peace in your storm? Do you believe that God can help you with that situation. Do you believe? Do you believe that God can miraculously turn it around and, and, and fix it? Do you believe? I'm going to tell you, the first thing is somebody needs to verbalize it. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And the Bible says that Jesus then looked at those two blind men. I like this. He touched their eyes and then he said this. According to your faith, be it unto you. He basically said, whatever measure you got in the cup right now, that's what you're getting. If you got a little bit, I don't know, maybe you get 20, 100 vision. I don't know. But, but, but if you got a whole lot, 
then I'm going to heal. And the Bible says at that point, their eyes were opened. And I'm going to tell somebody tonight, I got a question. Do you believe? Do you believe? Do you believe? And I, I, I believe I'm preaching to some. This is kind of where we're at. You know where we're at? Some of you do believe. You believe. Some of you don't believe. And some of you kind of believe. And you know where your pastor's at sometimes? I believe. And sometimes I kind of believe. And sometimes I'm struggling. And, 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 but I want to tell you, there's another thing about faith. Not only is it measurable. Not only is it quantifiable. But this is what I want to preach to us tonight. Is that you can increase your faith. Now I'm going to tell you. I, I want to tell somebody. That gives me some Holy Ghost joy to know that I don't have to stay at the level I'm at. Those disciples looked at Jesus and said, Jesus, right now on the faith meter, we're way down here. We're running on fumes. We just, just, we're following you. We hadn't bailed out on you. We hadn't left you yet. But, but Jesus, would you take us to the faith gas station and would you fill us up jesus would you increase our faith and i'm gonna tell you jesus didn't look at them and say get lost dude if you don't have a lot of faith you're out of luck jesus didn't say if you can't keep it full all the time then you're not worth messing with but the bible says in the next verse in luke 17 and 6 the lord said if you have faith as of a grain of mustard seed you might say to this sycamine tree, be plucked up and planted in the sea and it should obey you. Now, I, I want to take a moment here. I don't believe some people think that Jesus is praising having small faith here. If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, because we do know that in Matthew 13, it talks about a mustard seed and it's described as the least of all seeds. And apparently it is talking about size as well. They were very small. And, 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 but if that's the case, then, then it's, Jesus was contradictory. What's the deal here? Cause we read in Matthew 17, the disciples come to Jesus and they, they had, they had had this dilemma where they had tried to cast out a devil and the devil wouldn't go out. You remember that story? Devil wouldn't go out. And so Jesus had to cast them out. How embarrassing for the disciples. And they come to him and said, Jesus, what's the deal? And he said unto them, because you have just a little bit of faith. You couldn't do it because you had a little bit of faith. And then he said, but verily I say unto you, if you have faith as of a grain of mustard seed, you'll speak to mountains. And the mountain, uh, tell it to be cast into a yonder place and it shall be removed and nothing shall be impossible for you. So Jesus first rebukes their small faith and then apparently praises small faith if the size of the grain of mustard seed is a subject. But I'm going to tell you, that's not all he's talking about when he's talking about the mustard seed. The mustard seed size is only a part of its story. It's only part of the mustard seed. It is small. But we read in Matthew 13, the rest of the, the passage about the mustard seed, where it says it's small, it says this, it's indeed the least of all seeds. But when this, the mustard seed, it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs and becometh a tree. Now I like that. And so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. Now that excites me. The mustard seed is small, but it doesn't stay small. The mustard seed is little, but it grows. And this is why Jesus uses the mustard seed as a metaphor for faith. <laughs> Your faith may be small. It, you may be that little faith that he he rebuked and said you can't even cast out devils with that kind of faith you can't even do anything with that kind of faith but can I tell you your faith can grow tonight and, and I, I'm not going to preach too much longer but this is what I've come to preach tonight and is that somebody would get an attitude that says God increase my faith God let my faith get bigger God Give me the kind of faith that impacts every aspect of my walk with God. I want it to be that the very atmosphere of my Christian walk is saturated with faith. I, when I pray, I believe. 
when I worship, I believe. When I shout, I believe. When I just live my days, I believe. When I'm, when I'm going to work, I'm saturated with faith. Because I'm telling you that faith can grow. And if you don't have faith, the bad part is you're left with just your rational mind. The reason, the calculated part of your head. Can I tell you, it's a dangerous thing to try to live for God based on your reason. Because your mind will lie to you. And your emotions are even worse than your mind. Your emotions will lie to you. And your eyesight will lie to you. And your ears will lie to you. But at the end of the day, you know where you need to live? You need to live in the realm of faith. You need to live in the realm that says God can do anything. God can do anything. You need to just live there. I'm going to tell you, when you live there, it casts out fear. It it casts out doubt. It, It casts out unbelief. Some of you have been living with it for so long, you don't even realize that's what you've been going to bed with is doubt and unbelief. Some of us have been living with it for so long. You don't even realize when the Holy Ghost begins to move. Sometimes you just begin to discount things. They didn't really. That's not really of God. They're just in the flesh. They didn't really get the Holy Ghost. I don't feel that in this place. I'm going to tell you though. That's where your rational mind can go if you're not careful. But there needs to be a spirit that says, I believe God. I believe God. I believe he can heal the sick. I believe he can raise the dead. I believe he can heal diabetes. I believe he can cast out cancers. I believe he can touch anybody. I believe he can set addicts free and and set alcohol. Come on now. That's where we need to live in the realm of faith. We need to believe God. Oh, clap your hands and lift your voice and let's love him. Hallelujah. 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 Amen, amen. I, I, I'm not going to preach too much longer, but I, I want to tell you a couple of examples in your Bible. We read about the four men that carried a man with palsy to Jesus. The Bible says that, that when Jesus saw their faith, can I tell you, Jesus can see faith. And other people can see faith. In fact, the devil can see faith. The devil will run running out the door when he sees somebody that's full of faith. Jesus saw their faith. How did he see their faith? I know he's God in flesh, but part of it was they were carrying a man on a, on a little bed and bringing him. That's an act of faith. Heal him, Jesus. And Jesus healed him. Now, where did they get their faith? Here's the little backstory for that. The Bible says in Luke 5 that Jesus was teaching. That Jesus was teaching. And then the Bible says that people came from all over and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. And then these four men brought this man to Jesus. I wonder if it was something like this. Maybe one of the four was listening to Jesus teach. He's listening to him. And something sparked faith in his heart. And he began to think, oh my. And he remembered a buddy that was laying on a bed that couldn't, hadn't walked. And, and, and he began to say, you know, maybe God can heal my friend. And maybe he leaned over to somebody and said, hey, what about Zeke over there? Laying at home, couldn't even come to hear Jesus. And before it was over, there's four of them together talking. You know, one of the best things you can do for your faith is talk about the goodness of God. Amen. It wouldn't hurt for some of you to text some of the na- some of the people in the church about the blessings of God. I-, I know a bunch of you do, and some of you that text me about those miracles that God had been doing, giving you a home and giving you a better job and healing your body and saving your friends and neighbors. You need to text about 10, 15 people in this church. I- I'm going to tell you, great things happen when people begin to talk about the power of God. God, I'm going to tell you, faith can begin to rise. It can be part of just who we are, what we are. God can do it. He did it for them. He can do it for us. And I don't know how it all worked, but before it was over, four men went to Jesus and interrupted what he was doing. You know, while I'm preaching the word, I believe God right now can send a divine interruption. Amen. I read in Acts 10, the Bible says, while Peter yet spake the word, while Peter was preaching... He hadn't even got to the altar call yet. He hadn't even got to where he let people come down and said, we'll pray over the, you if you need healing in their body. He hadn't even said, if you need the Holy Ghost, come on down. You can get the Holy Ghost. But Peter was preaching right in the middle of his preaching. But somebody's faith hooked up with heaven. 
somebody's faith hooked up with heaven. And while he spake the word, they got the Holy Ghost right then and there. You know what? I, I'd love to see that happen right now while I'm preaching. That somebody's faith moving from just a little bit. That God, as I'm preaching the word, come on, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's why I preach to you about the miracles in the Old Testament. I, I'm going to tell you, God can do it right now. As I'm preaching, I would to God that somebody would let their faith grow. Let your faith grow. Come on, what do you need? What is it you need? Do you believe God can do it? Do, be honest. Do you, don't answer out loud if his answer is no. But do you believe God can do it? Do, do you believe God can do it? If, if the answer is less than absolutely yes... If the answer is less than absolutely yes, then would you join with somebody around you and let their faith get on you? Would you let my faith get on you? Would you open your ears and let the word speak to you that God can do it? I'm going to tell you, God can heal you. God can save your unsaved husband. God can work a miracle in your children. God can work it out. You don't have to run from problems all your life. God can do it. God can do it. God can do it. Oh, I'm preaching to somebody right now. You need to receive the word of God with faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I, I am done. I'd like us to stand. Amen. Well, don't, don't come quite yet. Pastor Booker, pray. Pray pray the prayer of faith where you're at. But don't just wait where you're at. You know what I'd like to see right now? I'd like to see somebody's faith begin to increase all across this place. You know what I'm going to do in the next 30 seconds? I'm going to just do what I started the message out with. I'm going to talk about how mighty God is. Amen. I'm going to give you a few miracles of Jesus in the New Testament. I know this is basic, but my Bible says that faith comes by hearing. And if your face right here, I'd love to see it bump up. Come on now. How close to your miracle? Where, if you've got faith according to your faith, so be it unto you. Can I remind you that Jesus did turn water into wine? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did you hear that? I pray your faith just rose. Can I preach to you that the nobleman's son was healed by Jesus? Can I tell you that the disciples were fishing all night long and they caught nothing? This really happened. And Jesus said, have you tried the other side of the boat? And they said, yeah, we've tried every side of the boat. But Jesus said, try the right side again. And and they said, yes, sir, at your word. And they caught a great draught of fishes. Can I tell you that he did heal the leper? I'm preaching to somebody tonight that the centurion servant really was healed. And Peter's mother-in-law really was healed. Listen, there's faith in this. If you'll just receive, I don't care how many times you've heard this list. I'm preaching that Jesus really did still the storm on the Sea of Galilee. Jesus really did feed 5,000. Jesus really did feed 4,000. Jesus really did walk on water. Oh God, let faith surge in this house. Jesus really did open the eyes of one that was born blind. Jesus really did heal the woman that had an issue of blood. Jesus really did raise Lazarus back to life. Jesus really did reach down and pick up Malchus's ear off the, he really did pick an ear off the ground and put it on the head, the head of the servant and he was made whole. You know what I'm doing tonight? I'm just preaching the word. I'm preaching faith. I'm preaching God can do anything anything. I'm I'm preaching God can heal you. God can touch your marriage. God can give you your kids. God can give you your children. God can help you with your backslidden friends. God, come on now. God can do it. God can help you with your finances. God can give you faith such that when you come to the church to pray, that your prayers reach heaven. That there's a spirit of expectancy. You know what I'm preaching tonight? I'm preaching in Increase our faith, God. A little bit's not enough. A little bit of faith won't cut it. I want great faith. I want, come on now. Is anybody interested in that kind of faith tonight? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Come on now. Are you here tonight with a trouble? Are you here tonight with a problem? If you need healing in your body, it would be the will of God for somebody to get healed in this house tonight. If you're here and you need the Holy Ghost, if you've never received the Holy Ghost, speaking in an unknown tongue, God wants to fill you with the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues. Amen, amen. I want to say it again. If you need healing tonight, you ought to run to this altar. You ought to catch the attention of one of these preachers. We're going to pray the prayer of faith. And God can heal you tonight. Come on. Somebody needs to be praying it right now. Increase my faith. Increase my faith. Hallelujah. I want you to listen to me in just a moment. Listen to me for just a moment longer. We're going to pray. I believe God wants to touch people, fill people with the Holy Ghost. I believe God wants to heal somebody. I felt something when I said this a minute, a little bit ago. I said some of you have gotten used to going to bed with doubt. Some of us have gotten used to waking up with fear riding our back. I think sometimes if we're not careful, we'll get used to living... Can I tell you tonight, it's the will of God to wash our eyes with eye salve. It's the will of God for a wind of faith to blow. A wind of faith to blow starting with some men tonight. A wind of faith to start with some fathers tonight. That some men would stand up in faith, believe in God for anything. Come on, God can give you a better job. God can help you with your finances. God can help you with your housing. God can help you with your children. It's the will of God for some mamas to get a new faith that God can save my unsaved family. God can save my unsaved husband. Come on, sister. Don't give up praying for that unsaved spouse. Right now, we're going to begin to sing. We're going to begin to worship. But I want every hand to be raised. And this is my prayer. Listen, listen, listen. Every hand raised. This is my prayer. That God would let faith blow in this house. And it would blow out doubt. It would blow out fear. It would blow out unbelief. It would blow out apathy. It would blow out anything that would hinder what God wants to do. Right now, I want us to begin to say this together. God, increase our faith. Let's begin to pray it. God, give me more faith. A little bit of faith isn't... Come on, say it to him. I don't want a little bit of faith. I want a whole lot of faith. I want great faith. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. That's it. I feel a wind of faith wanting to blow through your mind. A wind of faith wanting to blow through your spirit. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, come on, pray for somebody next to you. Pray the prayer of faith. Oh, in Jesus' name. Just have faith in God. Oh, have faith in God. Hallelujah. Trust in Him and never doubt. Yes, He on the local shoko tada bahata. That's it. That's it. Come on, let's pray. Oh, I feel it coming. I feel it blowing. In God, just have faith. Oh, have faith. In God, just have faith. If you trust in Him and never doubt.
if you trust in him.